Climate change is pushing our civilization to shift to a new economy based on sustainable energy. As this transition is happening, we are also discovering that keys to slowing down climate change exist all around us in nature. When we plug into the wisdom of nature and work alongside Earth's ecosystems, we discover new and exciting innovations. Many are already underway. It is this partnership with nature that will solve our most pressing climate concerns and create the building blocks for a civilization that works alongside nature, not against it. In the modern era, we forgot our interconnection with nature. Our technology let us grow beyond the limits nature imposed on us. Our economic system, based on extraction of resources, sped up this separation. Now plants and animals are going extinct all around us. But we destroy and ignore the natural world at our peril because much of what our planet does protects us and reverses the damage done by our industry. All that we do, all that we have, all that we need is basically provided by nature from fresh water to fresh air to the productivity of farmland to the sequestration of carbon to the replenishment of fisheries to the protection of communities from flooding and everything else by forests and wetlands. All of these things are being done by nature for us pretty much for free and we're diminishing them as we go on this uh, journey towards endless economic growth. Since pre-industrial times, the oceans have become about 30% more affected by ocean acidification because it's absorbed roughly a quarter of all the carbon dioxide that's been released to human activities. And that's a problem because it changes the chemistry of the ocean. And so it makes it more difficult for those creatures to build their shells and to grow. Uh, organisms like corals and coral reefs. Yes, the oceans are absorbing carbon dioxide. There's two primary ways that they do it. They're both critical for buffering us from climate change. Number one, the creature is living at the surface, has photosynthesis, and it's taking up the carbon in a biological way. The second way is dissolving the pure gas of CO2 into the ocean, and the colder the waters, the faster that gas goes in. There's also a lot that the planet is actually doing to help us mitigate climate change. If you look at some of the coastal ecosystems, uh, systems like tidal marshes and mangroves and seagrass beds, they actually take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and then trap it or mineralize it into the sediments, essentially mitigate climate change. Forestation is a well-known way to sequester carbon and other plant materials as well. There's a big movement at the international level to save the rainforest, to prevent them from being clear-cut for farming or burnt down for farming and ranching, and to reforest those areas that have been. So those are the natural ways to collaborate with nature to compensate for some of our energy use. Biodiversity is biosecurity. The more biodiverse an ecosystem is, the better it is able to respond to catastrophia, to human impacts, to, to pollution impacts. The soil, as it builds up the humus, carbon is being sequestered into the soil. And then as the soil debris and the wood debris builds up in the ecosystem, the carbon bank is being built as well. So you're not liberating this into the atmosphere. While nature is doing all these things for us for free, our systems should also work alongside nature further accelerating ecological benefits. Agriculture off fossil fuels can put ancient sunlight back in the ground while also feeding the world with current sunlight. Regenerative organic agriculture can not only reduce climate change, but reverse climate change. And here's how it works. Photosynthesis relies on the ability of a plant to pull carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and then using the energy from the sun and water and nutrients from the soil, create carbohydrates. If we could generalize across the globe regenerative organic practices, we could actually sequester more than 100% of the current annual CO2 emissions in deserts, in jungles, in temperate zones. We can put carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and put it back into the ground whence it came. The power of nature and its secrets can also lead to exciting new innovations. By studying and mimicking nature, something called biomimicry, we can unlock many of the answers that will fix our most pressing problems. Life's had 3.8 billion years on this planet, and in that time has really figured out how to live here gracefully. So energy efficiency, material use, absolutely not have any waste, have cyclic processes, 
chemistries that are life friendly. In almost every realm we look at, there's an enormous data bank of biological intelligence that until recently we've been ignoring, and that's changing now with biomimicry. Engineers, chemists, material scientists, the people who make our world are asking, has nature already solved this? And is there a model out there that I can emulate? In conserving energy, there's a company called Regent that has studied how ants and bees very efficiently forage and communicate with one another. They've taken that and put it in a software program that reduces appliance use of energy by 25, 30%, because the appliances are actually communicating with one another and dialing down their energies when they're not needed. A company called Novamer that's taking CO2 and turning it into biodegradable plastics by studying how plants have done this. There's a company called Calera that's studying the coral reef recipe, and they're taking CO2 out of smokestacks and putting seawater through it and precipitating out concrete, which is the biggest building material in the world, uh, using dissolved CO2. An EPA grant, phase one, for microfiltration, filtering gray water of E. coli. And we found a mushroom called the Garden Giant that's exceptionally good at capturing E. coli, cleaning water, and is plant friendly. That's a real good example. There's a wind turbine. It's a company called Well Power in Canada that has scalloped edges. And that is taken from a very efficient drag reduction strategy on the flipper of a humpback whale. It reduces drag by 32%. We are learning that nature holds secrets we depend on, yet we are nearing a tipping point driven by our culture that thinks it does not need nature. For us to endure, we must stop eroding the natural treasures all around us and allow for the regenerative power of our planet to take hold. We depend on these natural systems, especially the life support systems, and we need to modify our behavior to collaborate with them and certainly not to destroy them. We only have 10% of the wood debris in the forest than we did just a few hundred years ago. And the ecosystem now is being stressed out, then diseases spread. And so now we have entered into a period of viral storms. We have massive amounts of pollution. We have water quality issues. Those very systems are actually being lost at the rate of about 2% a year. And so very concrete action is make sure we protect these habitats and, and where they've been destroyed, restore them. So obviously, ultimately, we have to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide we put into the atmosphere. So many hundreds of millions of tons of the CO2 that now vex us, that now threaten our existence, came right from the soil. Let's put it back. It's an all hands on deck moment. We need to reinvest in the biodiversity of the ecosystem because ultimately that's the safest route for us. Absolutely, we have to protect the blue carbon. It's much easier to preserve the natural systems that were evolved to be very efficient than we could ever recreate or engineer. Unlocking nature's secrets will help us solve the climate crisis. Working alongside nature will create a civilization that will be infinitely sustainable. The time has come to build this world now.